the Deschutes River in Central Oregon is quite possibly one of the most unique and diverse river systems in the world because of constant year-round cold water flow combined with its high chemical productivity. Enhanced by recent conservation efforts, this river has become a haven for migrating summer steelhead and red-side rainbow trout. Starting in the middle of July, this river becomes a fisherman's dream. Welcome to Fishing the Endless Season, a new fishing show dedicated to helping the avid fishermen improve their fishing by understanding the fish, their environment, and how every ecosystem works together, not just for fishing today, but for tomorrow and long into the future. Now, from the mouth of the Deschutes River, here's your host, Dudley Nelson. Good morning and welcome to the show. I'm going to be joined today by Brad Staples. Brad, good, good morning. morning. Dudley. And Jim Martin. Jim, good morning, Dudley. Brad's the river guide and he has some experience on the river here and Jim's our resident scientist slash fisherman and he's going to show us a whole lot about both, hopefully. Brad, how long have you been fishing on the river? Well, I started guiding here, Dudley, in 1983, mm -hmm. running whitewater raft mm -hmm. trips and then that led into running gear boats for the guys that were doing fishing trips and whitewater raft trips. Um, and I started here in 1987 with the power boat. Well, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And Jim, how long have you been a scientist? Well, 30 years with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. Retired and went to work as conservation director for a large fishing tackle company. I get to fish more these days and have more fun. Brad, what are we going to be using up here? Well, um, on the lower 100 miles, there's no uh, bait allowed at all. So mm -hmm. we'll be using spinners and plugs, flies, mm -hmm. jigs, whatever it takes to try to catch the fish. Yeah. Also, um, on the lower 100 miles, there's no fishing from a, a floating device. So whether it be a power boat or a, a drift boat or raft, you mm -hmm. have to be able mm -hmm. to fish on the bank. So you got to be able to wade. Mm -hmm. Jim, what kind of fish are we fishing well, for we'll today? We'll be fishing the leading edge of the summer steelhead. The fish that come into the Columbia in the summer steel in the summer and turn right up the Deschutes. We'll be fishing hatchery and wild fish that are bound for the Deschutes. And also bonus fish, we'll be fishing some of the Columbia stock that pull in here for a cold water refuge mm -hmm. and they'll back out later and go up river. So right now we've got them really clustered up in the lower Deschutes. Should be a great day. Oh, that sounds good. Let's go get them, okay? Okay, that'd be All great. Right. The Deschutes River flows through hundreds of miles of desert, dense forests, and deep canyons. Its source comes from the central Cascade Mountains and several large springs. As it winds its way toward the Columbia, the Deschutes encounters several large reservoirs, intense Class 5 rapids, and plenty of holding water for the steelhead like to rest on hot afternoons. The mouth of the Deschutes River is located 14 miles east of the Dalles, Oregon, situated in an arid, desert-like terrain. Most of the wildlife in the area stays near the river, so we should see quite a bit today. And above the Deschutes River Canyon are miles and miles of gently rolling hills, most of which are used for agriculture and grazing. We'll be traveling on the lower Deschutes today through smooth water, as well as several rapids. Our river guide, Brad Staples, is in high demand because of his vast knowledge and experience on the river. He's often booked months in advance and busy until the end of October. Jim Martin is a highly regarded biologist and conservationist. His tenure with the Department of Oregon Fish and Wildlife included heading up the Fisheries Division and was also a leading consultant to the Governor's Office on Salmon Issues. Dudley Nelson has been fishing the Northwest since he was a boy. He's a retired state police officer and game warden who spent many years on the rivers in the Northwest. He's also been the guest host on several fishing shows over the years. We're privileged to have all of them on this day's adventure. Okay, we're on the Deschutes River. We're about 10 miles above the mouth. We're trying to catch a steelhead on a fly here before the sun gets on the water. We're fairly early in the season, but there should be good numbers of fish in here. We're in the right place. We got the right gear and we got the right guide, so uh, we're going to put the 
put the pressure on the guide to make sure that we get in the right spot here and catch that a was fish. A, that was a good cast, Dudley, and I'm hoping that uh, I'm going to put the pressure on you and say that you're <laughs> the one that's... I don't have the rod in my hand, so oh, yeah, it's up to you to back try off, to, huh? yeah, it's, yeah, it's up to you to right. try and catch the fish. Yeah. But yeah, we're starting out this morning at this spot. This is a good place where the fish hold. Um, these rocks are out here breaking the current a little bit, and it also provides some oxygen in the river. And so I've got you working up high, and then I have Jim down below there, and we'll see if we can't um, get a fish out of here. Um, two different flies on your um, your rod right now this morning, and um, first I started out with this uh, this green rubber leg one here. And then um, I've also got this other fly here. It's uh, silver, red, white, and blue. So as you can tell, I've got other types of flies that are in the in the box. And um, I think they like that flash of boo. They real do. Well. They, they really were... like that. And I'll get people up here that'll that'll fish flies without flash. I'll give them one of mine that has some flash, and and I think that they mm -hmm. actually uh, do better with the ones that, that have the flash yeah. on it. Um, not that you can't catch them without, but um, for me, it, it, it seems to work. So. What I'm suggesting you do is cast out like you've been doing, and then um, at the end of it, we're going to take okay. one step down. Brad and I stayed at this section of the river until the sun started hitting the water. With no strikes, we decided to pick up Jim and move to the opposite bank, which was still in the shade. Dudley, I've got you on what we call a bubble and a fly, to where we're using the same flies that we had on the other side of the river. It's just now it's attached to a spinning rod. There's a float that's filled up uh, partway full of water so that it adds weight so you can cast it, but yet there's still some air in there so it'll float. Those flies are also skimming on the surface just like you're using a fly rod. This is more difficult to fish with a, a traditional one-handed fly rod because of the tall bank and the trees yeah, and grass behind it. Yeah, I can see it. that. So, but uh, it drops off real deep here off the edge and keep letting that swing around clear almost underneath those trees. When it swings around and then stops, those flies start to sink. A lot of time that's when you get nailed. As we began moving down the bank, I started to get some action. I thought that was going to be one. One rolled right there. I took my fly right over him, but he didn't want it. But I'll try him one more time. Ah, there he is. Ah, got him. There's one. Brad, I got a fish. All right, Dudley, Woo! fish on! <laughs> right where he was before. I knew okay, he was good. I was ready for him. <laughs> I love that. All right, Dudley. Okay, well that's a nice fish there. Even an old blind hog Whoa. finds an acorn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's about a six pounder or so. I couldn't tell. If oh no, was... that looked like that was twelve or fourteen. No, now come on, <laughs> come on. Come on. <laughs> start, usually it starts growing after lie. you get them. I always got to tell the truth. So. <laughs> no, that's a good twelve pounder. That's I... a dandy one. Oh <laughs> man. It's nice to see the All wild right. ones doing so well. Oh, there you go. Thank you. So, yeah, it's it's about a six pound, beautiful chrome bright. It's got the adipose fin on it here. Jim, um, what do you think then? Well, I'm thinking this is a fish that's been clear to the Aleutians. It probably Jeez. went to sea uh, two years ago, and uh, it's a real standard uh, summer steelhead. Mint bright, you can tell how it hasn't been in the river very long as it's in the river. It'll start getting a red stripe, typical of the rainbow trout. Right. Beautiful, beautiful fish, very healthy, high energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, Great. well, I think we should. Uh, I think we need to let him go. Let her go. Out. See, I used barbless hooks, and yeah. that fly just basically fell out. So, um, yeah, this is a beautiful. Well, let me fish. touch my fish. You so. want to touch it? I want to touch yeah? it. Thank okay. you, thank you, Mrs. Steelhead. You bet. No, that was that was great. Is there more out there? Oh, I think there's definitely going to be more. We just <laughs> we've only been here about ten minutes. So. Oh, this is perfect. Yeah. What a way to start the morning. Yeah. When we return, Jim will teach us how to look for river insects, and he'll also get the chance to even the score with Dudley. Welcome back to Fishing the Endless Season. One thing that fishermen love to do is crawl around in riffles and turn rocks over and see what kind of insects are underneath the rocks. I just uh, dredged a couple rocks over and look what I came up with. Two different varieties of caddis. Caddis are an interesting uh, creature. They make little cases out of rocks, cementing them together. And a lot of times you wouldn't even know there's an insect inside there. They'll, 
they'll suck back up into their case when they sense danger. And these are two different kinds of caddis. This is a larger October caddis. And this is a smaller caddis we call the green rockworm. And this is what they look like with the case taken off. Another very interesting and productive food source for fish are mayflies. They're kind of triangular little flat bodies, you can see. And one way you can tell a mayfly is they have three tails, as opposed to a stonefly that has two, or as opposed to a caddis that will make a rock case. Fish also love these snails. The snails eat the, the algae off the bottom of the rocks, and then they'll drift down river with the current, trying to find new places to feed, and fish will spot these snails rolling through the riffle. What this indicates is excellent water quality and also excellent chemical productivity of the water. The light is penetrating the water, creating the algae on the rocks, and these little guys are eating the algae, and our fish are eating the insects. We'll start looking around, see if we can find one of the bigger stoneflies, but these are very common examples of high productivity insect base in the stream like the Deschutes. We're gonna turn these guys back loose, crawl back under the rocks, or a fish will get them. I just love doing this. After looking for stream critters, Brad pointed me to an area which was a pretty good spot for my spinning rod and my favorite pink and white jig. Hey, there he is! Okay, hey Brad! What's up, Woo Brad, Brad, I got him! Yeah, I'm, I'm coming! Okay! Oh man, I was clear down there. All righty, Jim. He's a nice one. He's jumping. Yeah, let me get over here a little bit. Yeah. And uh, Watch out, it's real deep right there. Yeah. We'll see if we can't get him into here. Oh, he's a, he's a wild fish. Right. Took oh, he that bit pink, that jig, huh? Took that pink and white jig. All right. He's been jumping and racing around. Well, he's a beauty. Nice fish. Look at that guy. Oh, he's beautiful. Yeah. Nice and bright. No marks on it. Boy, him. these fish are just coming into the Deschutes. This is the front yeah. leading edge of the run. Right. And, and they are here. Yep. No, that's good. What wonderful fishing. It was so much fun to watch that bobber go under. Oh, yeah. That's a nice fish there. Yeah. Boy, he's full of it. There he goes. Good job. Thanks, huh? pal. That was great. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sorry it, took me a while to get, sorry it took me a while to get to you. Oh, that's okay. We were having fun together. All right. <laughs> After that terrific fish, we took a break to look at something very special on this river. The uh, Oregon Wildlife Heritage Foundation in 1983, which was the one that put this purchase together, the lower 12 miles of the Deschutes, um, placed these plaques up and down the river. If you're either a uh, private donor or a corporate sponsor and put in, I think it was $25,000 towards the purchase, you, um, they gave you a plaque. Right, and this one's a really special one. I'm actually a member of the Board of Directors of the Wildlife Heritage Foundation. Pretty familiar with this. This one says Robert D. Drake Wayside. Robert Drake and his wife Beulah were very active in our foundation. I was involved in that fundraising back in 83 as a member of the Northwest Steelheaders, and our family donated $50 to get a little plaque that said we owned one square foot of the Lower Deschutes. And I remember school kids were involved, uh, fishing groups were involved, Large donors were involved and even corporations to develop the $1.5 million it took to put the lower 12 miles in public ownership. And then after that, the foundation went back to some of those same donors and asked for money to help with the fencing so we could get the grazing up on the hillside and not down in the streamside vegetation area, the management of the river, so that we really have this wonderful recreational powerhouse here today. They've really done a wonderful thing. The Heritage Foundation and all these donors be so proud of the legacy they left. Right. Well, like you said, with the um, vegetation, the trees and the grass coming back, it definitely is helping the fish, and that's shown by the fish that we've yeah, got today. Just look at yeah. it, the wildlife and everything else as well. Right. When we return, Jim will share why the Deschutes is such a unique and productive river system, and he'll also work on catching a few trout. Don't go away. Welcome back to Fishing the Endless Season. You know, the Deschutes River is a textbook example of the perfect salmon and steelhead stream because it's got the right combination of cool, constant flow water, high chemical productivity in the water, 
streamside vegetation, and look at these aquatic vegetation. It's a natural place for aquatic insects to breed, and it's a sure sign of the high chemical productivity of the river. You know, with the aquatic insects that are gonna rear in the gravel and in this vegetation, and the terrestrial insects like grasshoppers and ant that'll hang out in these trees and drop into the stream, it's the perfect food base for a large production of both salmon and steelhead and trout. In most western rivers, you have either salmon or steelhead or trout, but very few are capable of supporting both together like the Deschutes. The reason the Deschutes has such high quality water is because when Mount Mazama blew up and created Crater Lake, the whole top of the mountain settled in the upper Deschutes as ash fields and to this day the snowpack sinks into that ash, is cold and comes out as cold water springs in the headwaters of the Deschutes. So you don't get a great big snow melt and then low warm water like you do in many streams, you get this constant flow of spring fed cold water. The combination of this kind of water quality, the chemical productivity of the river, this kind of habitat equates to a huge insect base and food supply for the fish. From a fish's point of view, dinner served. Okay guys, so well, we're gonna give this spot a try for trout. And uh, Dudley, I'm sorry for getting you wet at that last <laughs> rapid up there. Didn't That's mean to right. splash you, but um, 20 years ago was when the uh, foundation purchased the, um, the property. And then shortly after that, they put the fence up to uh, keep the cattle off the majority of the river. It's made a really big impact. Well, particularly for trout, Brad, because the gr regrowth of the uh, streamside trees uh, holds so many terrestrial insects, provides shade and nutrients for the aquatic insects. And the salmon steelhead can grow to a certain size and then go to sea, but the trout have got to live here. And so you're just going to see a big response from trout yeah. to that increased uh, insect base. Historically, we'd have good trout populations in the upper river where you had more streamside vegetation, but down here it'd just be grazed to the dirt. Now what you're seeing is the response of, look at the vegetation around us. It's right. just insect yeah. factories which turn into those trout populations. Right. So well, let's go see if we can find one. That'd be great. So uh, Dudley, let's walk, walk okay. out here and see, uh, probably make a few casts. This kind of drops off in here, but okay. uh, work your magic, Dudley. Yeah. See work if we can't magic. get one right out of here or okay. so. Just start in close and we'll just keep yeah. working it out. So what I'd like you to do is we'll yeah. make a cast right up here towards this rock okay. and then the next cast a few feet out. Okay. And uh, we'll fish this and then we'll take a few steps out and see what happens. Well, Dudley, what we're going to do is we're going to try this, uh, what they call an elk hair caddis. Mm -hmm. and it's about mm -hmm. a size number 12 or so. And then I've got a little dropper fly below it that's probably 24 inches or so. And we've got what they call a copper john. Yeah. And this imitates uh, a lot of the underwater bugs um, that are there that eventually will uh, hatch out into a flying insect okay. like this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use uh, this fly as a dropper. Mm -hmm. And then I've got this one as a dry that also will act as an indicator. So if this all of a sudden goes down, mm -hmm. you come back, cause hopefully a trout's got okay. this. It's possible you might snag a rock out yeah. there. But um, and maybe we'll get one to come up for the drive. Okay. So we're going to work this out. First, you're going to be casting in close, and then maybe two feet out, and we're going to kind of okay. make a little fan presentation. Then we'll take a step or two up river, see if we can't get one between here and that white water up there. That sounds right. excellent. Okay. okay good. Does that fly got dressing on it, or is um, it, yeah, it does have it's going to float pretty good? Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's, it's what they call an elk hair, so the, okay, it'll um, float. Yeah. yeah, it should float really good. So, okay. Okay. So let's uh, see what happens here. I fished for a while with no strikes. So Brad moved us to another spot on the opposite bank. It was there that Jim caught a beautiful red side on a bobber and a black jig. Brad, we got a beautiful, about 14 inch native red side. This is a red band trout. All the rainbows that are east of the mountains are red bands. Look at the beautiful spotting. Adipose fin, clearly not a hatchery fish. Just real deep, bright. What a beautiful fish. Yeah, and what I think is really interesting about these is how the fins are so purple on them. And they also seem to be pretty large compared to some other trout that you know I've caught and maybe even upriver the trout yes. that are there by Warm Springs. It's a very healthy fish, took a black jig. Why don't we turn this baby loose? Yeah, that'd be great. It's a wonderful catch and release fishery. Well, it just shows what the health of the river system is, the type of trout that are in here, especially exactly. being native fish like this. It's real important to leave them in the water and when they revive, let them swim off and be healthy like that. Okay, okay. good job. Yeah, hey, good right. job. Don't go away. 
Fishing the Endless Season. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Fishing the Endless Season. Brad took us to another spot where I got one more chance to catch the big one. Oh, fish on! Fish Dudley, on! Dudley, you got one? I got one, Brad. All right, what were you using this time? I got that same little spinner on I had that last fish on. Really? A little Great. red-bodied sneak body with a metric blade. And you were up there at the top? Yeah, up at the top. That's yeah. run me clear down here about right. 50 or 100 yards. Good. But I think I got the best of him now. Okay. Hey, well, Dudley, you got it's, one. It's another got wild, fin too, wild fish, yeah? Yeah. Ooh, that's oh, nice a fat fish. guy there. Isn't that a fat one? Boy, oh, look fish. at that. Another wild fish. Yeah. Look how fat that one is, Jim. See yeah. that? Oh, it's a beauty. And it's another female. I need your pliers, too, because I still okay. got that same hook on Okay. Nice. Well hooked right in the corner of the mouth. Oh, yeah, mine are always hooked that way. <laughs> Boy, oh. these wild fish are so healthy. Yeah. yeah. Aren't they I mean, that's what I'm saying. Look how fat that oh, one is. Just, it's so much easier I gotta to touch listen. it. Yep. I gotta touch another there hand, too. Yep. Yep. Everything's been hands. Right. Look at the spinner. It's all beat up. Yeah, they're still <laughs> biting nice it. That's, that's bite marks from steelhead there. All right. Yeah, that's a beautiful Thank fish. Thank you, Brad. Beautiful. Well, you did good on that one, yeah, Dudley. So let's it. put her on back here. And... <laughs> did she wear you out or you wear her out? It was a yeah? tie. It was a tie. <laughs> it was a tie. Thank you, All man. Right. She goes. Good oh. job, Dudley. Not again. Man, We're you're getting the handshakes out. Nice going, yeah, <laughs> On our trip back down to the mouth, Brad showed off his boating skills on this river. We were quite impressed by the ride. That's a wild boat ride, Brad. Thank yeah, you very much for time. the trip. You're a wonderful guide. We had a wonderful time up the river. It's a beautiful canyon. Thank Brad, you. we got beautiful steelhead, great rapids. It's a world-class river. Thank you. Well, that's it for this week's episode. For the cast and crew, I'm Barry Burks. We'd like to thank you for watching. Join us again next week as we bring you another great episode of Fishing the Endless Season.